When you go to preaching class, which is properly called homiletics, you learn a lot of things. There are a lot of rules, a lot of do's and don'ts. Some of the do's, things you're supposed to do in preaching, are you have to be prayerful. And you have to be organized. You have to speak clearly. And you have to have a mission statement, a theme that people can understand and take with them so that folks can walk away at the end of your sermon saying, I know what that was about, and I have a chance to remember it past coffee hour, which is ideal but seldom achieved. You have to have a clear subject and a clear conclusion. Now, some of the don'ts of preaching include mumbling, not supposed to mumble, going off on unrelated tangents and losing track of what you're trying to say, engaging in distracting bodily movement, not supposed to do any of that. And one of the big don'ts, though, the big don'ts, the one that's always stressed to us, is don't try to do too much. Stay focused. There is danger in trying to cover all of the readings on the same Sunday. You can get lost, and your message can get lost with you. So with all those good lessons and all those good do's and don'ts in mind, I'm going to ignore them, and today I'm going to try to cover all the readings. Treat them as one. Because when I take today's readings, today's bulletin, and put it up against my head and pray to God that something, some clear, faithful message can soak its way inside my skull, at the end of that process, all the readings are still there. So, okay, we'll go with it. And what do those readings say to me and what would I like to say to you? Well, I can sum it up pretty quickly. The readings are telling me to speak to you about shepherds and sheep. More specifically, good shepherds versus poor shepherds, and the sheep that have to deal with them. The consequences, yes, the consequences of good and bad shepherding. Now, a word about shepherding and sheep. It was common in the ancient world to draw an analogy between shepherds and sheep and kings and their subjects. Kings are the shepherds, their people, their subjects are the sheep. And in a pastoral agrarian society like the society in Jesus' time, everyone understood the qualities of a good shepherd. A good shepherd kept watch over his flock night and day. He made sure that none were lost or overlooked. He listened for signs of distress or danger. He tended to them when they were sick or hurt. And he shared a very special language with his flock, with his sheep, through verbal commands, other noises and gestures. He would communicate when to feed, when to go out in the morning, when to come in at night, whether there was a predator nearby, a very, very special and intimate relationship with his flock. A good shepherd fulfilled all the needs of his flock and was on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Then we turn to our readings. Where in our readings today, we have some examples of really terrible shepherding, really terrible kingship. Look at Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah. He was writing at the time when Jerusalem fell to the Babylonians in 586 before the Common Era. And the reference, the person who was the object of all that woe in Jeremiah, woe to this and woe to that, was Zedekiah, the king at the time, who uh, 
was basically in charge of Jerusalem when it was overrun by the Babylonians. And this is a particularly chilling passage from Jeremiah. The Lord tells Jeremiah, or tells Zedekiah through Jeremiah, you have not attended to my people, so I will attend to you. Now, if I'm that king, I feel chills up and down my spine. That's pretty serious stuff. And then you go into our New Testament reading, our gospel from Mark. Jesus was speaking to the crowd right after John the Baptist was beheaded. And the people of that time, Jesus' people, were oppressed. And they were starving. And to Herod, Herod, the king at that time, the shepherd at that time, people were either useful or not. They were just objects for him, things for him. And so Jesus says, very tellingly, just like in Jeremiah, 600 years before that, the people were like sheep without a shepherd, subjects without a king. So in Jeremiah's time, bad kingship, bad shepherding led to the fall of Jerusalem. Jerusalem fell to the Babylonians, and the Israelites were deported and enslaved. In Jesus' time, bad kingship resulted in murder and systemic political and economic oppression. Those who spoke up often were imprisoned or crucified. But in both passages, in Jeremiah and in Mark and in Ephesians, we are either told or shown what good shepherding what good leadership, what good kingship should look like. In Jeremiah, we see that under a good king, a good shepherd, you have abundance, you have safety, you have righteousness, and you have justice. In Mark, and it is notable that in today's ex excerpt from that gospel, the miracle of feeding the people with loaves and fish, and the miracle of walking on water are left out. This gospel passage concentrates on Jesus' feelings for his people, his feelings for his flock. And his feelings included compassion and patience. He provided comfort and healing. And in Ephesians, the writer of Ephesians, portrays a society characterized by peace and unity, communion with and under the greatest shepherd of all, the one true God. So, right in those same passages where we see the consequences of bad kingship, bad shepherding, we see what good shepherding looks like. So now it's the 21st century. And even though we understand the analogy, shepherds and sheep really aren't part of our everyday experience very much. Jobs as kings and queens are also pretty scarce these days. But all of us at one time or another, and often at the same time, are shepherds and sheep. We're all shepherds and sheep because we're leaders and followers. I'm a swimming coach, soon to be a retired swimming coach, but a swimming coach. And if I look at the guidelines in scripture today about being what a good shepherd should be, I would be attentive to my flock 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and I would know everything that they're doing in great detail, and I would be there every time they're a little bit sick, a little bit hurt, a little bit lost, I would be bonded to them all the time. I can tell you right now, I don't want that. I don't need to know what 46 college uh, students are doing all the time. So this is a high bar Jesus is setting for everybody. But all of us, to a certain extent, are shepherds and sheep. 
where leaders and followers were parents and children, teachers and students, bosses and employees. I suppose I should say supervisors and supervisees to stay up with the times. Were coaches and athletes, were ministers and laypersons, were elected officials and the people they represent, and were all those at once. On any given day, you could be a leader and a follower many times over. And as Christians, we try to emulate Jesus when we're called upon to be shepherds or leaders. And we see examples of righteous and just and compassionate and attentive leadership, both in the church and in the world around us. Leadership that teaches and unifies. Leadership that points to God. And in scripture and throughout history, we also see examples of very bad shepherding. Leaders who steal from and exploit and dismiss the needs of their people. Some are nefarious and evil. Some are merely incompetent. All of them are destructive. Yes, there are places in this world that seem to be stuck in darkness. So out of all this, we have good news and we have a challenge. The good news is twofold for us. First, as Christians, we can tell the difference between good and bad shepherding. It isn't always easy, but we have the prayerful and discerning means to tell the difference between good and bad shepherding. That's good news. The second, we, in particular, the citizens of this country, live in a society where the shepherds, our leaders, are at least somewhat accountable to the sheep, to us, the people. And if we aren't happy, if our ideals are not met, shepherds can be replaced with varying degrees of difficulty, but they can be replaced. It's called democracy. It's a wonderful thing. And our challenge is also twofold. Our first challenge is to strengthen the ideal of the good shepherd in the church, in the body of Christ. To make the body of Christ even more just, even more righteous, even more attentive, even more compassionate, even more of a healing presence. And also to make it tough enough to make hard decisions for the greater good. That's the first challenge. The second challenge we face is to bring that good shepherd in ourselves and in our church out alive and kicking into the greater world and the greater society including those tough places where good shepherds never seem to go. So how do we do that? What's my landing strip prayer that they would want me to say in preaching class? Well, my prayer for us today is that we, individually and collectively, as the body of Christ, are both good shepherds in our own lives and with our own families and with those who we influence. We have to be good shepherds to those sheep that we influence every day in our various roles in life. And second, we have to be even better sheep than we are shepherds. We have to be even better sheep. We have to pay attention to what our various shepherds are doing, what our various leaders are doing and hold them accountable to our ideals. If we do that, if we do that, if we work on being both good shepherds in our own lives and good sheep, holding our various shepherds accountable for their actions, then, then we have a chance to bring that light of Christ into the world one little step at a time. Amen.